What's up, gang? It is I, Carlton Flowers, your crypto pro. Yay! And I wanted to give this quick update to show the current situation with the Bitcoin chart. We'll look at the four hour, the one day, and the one week as things have changed just since the last emergency video that I posted last night. Now that we see the four hour cycle kind of playing out and it's kind of playing games with us, we can't really tell yet what's going to happen. So during that emergency, emergency video, I posted that the stochastic on the four hour was down here at the bottom, right? It was looking bearish. It was at the bottom, but it did instead of, um, continuing to move down here, it, it made the cup movement kind of made your bottom formation and started to crawl up out of it. Now we see that it is coming up and out of that pattern. But as we saw that we had another head fake here, you see where the blue fast line had dipped down and touched the red line. So it looked like the blue fast line was going to cross over that red and come back down. And then you'll notice here that it glanced off of the, the percent D line and it jumped back up. So that's very interesting that we saw that happen. Now, looking down here on the MACD, this looks like it could push up higher for a little bit. And so the MACD lags the stochastic oscillators. And we see that we have experienced a bottom point down here. And now we have a crossover of the two oscillators down here, which says that we could start to move up here and do another cycle up where we go above the zero line right there. But then as we always have to look for, what price do we get at the next stochastic and MACD peak? Here's what I mean by that. At this peak here, right before it like actually did not cross over and it went back up, we were here about to form a, another lower high, but it looks like the uh, price is going to push up and that this little crossover that almost did not happen here, uh, it unfurled. That kind of says, well, hey, we're going to try to give another chance at a higher high or somewhere up here. But if it stays in this area and just sidebands, then that's just confirmation of a continued downtrend. Same thing here. If the MACD comes all the way back up and we're at the top of the cycle and we're printing green bars on the histogram. If we look up here and we're only at this level in price, that's a confirmed lower low, which says that the downward momentum will continue and it means price will jump up, possibly glance off the 200 EMA and then head on down south for another dip. So that's how we use the stochastic and the MACD to make sense out of where is this thing going. Now look into the one day chart. Let's uh, scrunch this down just a little bit. And it looks like the fast line and the slow line here on the stochastic. It looks like the fast line is trying to curl around. You see how it's curling up and trying to make that cup move in the bottom that we get whenever it reverses. So we have that little cup movement here. And then, of course, what would happen is the fast line does this. And then the slow line lagging behind it, you would get a crossover and then it's underneath it. And so that would mean it's time for an up cycle. But we don't know just yet, are we really going to get that up cycle? And then if we do, the question is, again, do we get another lower high or are we going to break out to a higher high? Will we make it all the way back up to this volume node up here or is it going to falter before we get there and bounce off of the 50 EMA just like it did before? Now, when you look down on the MACD, it doesn't look as good because we had this swing up, then we had to swing down to the neg negative territory. We had the confirmed crossover right there, and then it starts to look bullish again. But notice how the fast line has just touched down onto the slow line right there. That means that it could cross over, and that means that the oscillators could continue down for more bearish movement. And so that also means that right here where we were printing this nice little section of green here on the histogram, we could drop below that zero line and make another session that's down there in the negative with some red bars. So that's what I see on the one-day chart. 
And if this cycle completes and we have a complete new cycle that brings us into overbought territory, again, the question is, where will the price be? Will we get a higher high or will we get a lower high? That will confirm the overall direction and if the trend is broken. All right, so last but not least, let's jump into the one week chart and see what it looks like now. And this is what I was telling you about in the last video with the computer voice that I did because I was in the car and the audio was terrible. So I used text to speech and thought I would try out a video and use the computer voice, but it took a lot of editing and it was not easy, but it at least made it to where the audio would be somewhat tolerable. So here we are on the one week chart and we see that we had this fake out yet again, where the fast line looked like it was going to come down and cross over the slow line, and then it glanced off and gave up again, and they diverged. That means that the percent K and the percent D move away from each other instead of towards each other. So they almost had that crossover, and then it failed, and it glanced away from it. So what's going to happen here? Is it going to try again to cross over for an up cycle, or are we going to be headed down here into the negative territory? Well, when you look at the MACD, it looks negative because you had this positive run up. You had the correction. We ran up again and had a lower high here, but look at this crossover between the percent K and the percent D. That's a bearish crossover, and momentum is headed downstairs. Okay, so we're currently printing red bars, oops, red bars on the histogram. If I could put drawing mode back on, sorry about that. Here we go, there's the red bars down underneath the zero line, and these oscillators could continue on. And so it might be that the overall trend is bearish. Well, whatever the case, we might not be done with the bearish movement. It might not be the time yet for a breakout, but we're going to have to wait and see. It doesn't matter to me, though, and I'm hoping that we continue to correct because that just means more buying opportunities because we all know where it's going. We're going to get a bull market cycle peak, and we're going to be able to make a whole lot more money if we can dollar cost average and buy different cryptos down here at the lower prices instead of buying into a run. After it goes parabolic, you have people that like to buy into the run. Well, you make minimum profit. In fact, what most people do, they buy into a run, and then after the correction comes, they get upset and think, oh my God, I got to sell and cut my losses. And then they sell down here, down here for a loss. That's the majority of investors doing it the backwards way. So you should really, and this is not financial advice, by the way, you should really put your mind into buying mode when everyone else is scared and when there's blood in the streets and when a correction's going on. Buy low, sell high. It seems like a simple concept, but not a lot of people do it. All right, that's all I've got for now. I'm going to continue on with the vacation. This is Carlton, and I am out.